Hi everybody, welcome. I'm Ben Brisch, director of the German Center for Research and Innovation in New York, and uh, of the Ger I'm also director of the German Academic Exchange Service New York office. And I would like to thank Dietrich Fenner and Kuei No for opening our future forum and introducing our participants in the stakeholder talk show. You can see, um, let me start right away with the first question to Professor Mukachi, president of the German Academic Exchange Service, the DAAD. Dear Professor Mukachi, why is it important that the German Center for Research and Innovation, the DWIH, DWIH New York, is building Biopolis, the green city of the future? Um, thanks uh, for inviting me to this uh, future forum opening. Uh, I'm glad to be with you. Um, and uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the German Center for Research and Innovation to um, um, display also um, a German and American perspective on a topic that uh, deals with um, an almost ubiquitous trend of the past few decades. Um, so the trend towards urbanization, more and more people in German cities, and the same holds true for other countries um, as well, move into larger cities, metropolitan areas. And we see, of course, that this um, um, creates also challenges um, with more and more people drawing on scarce resources, with more and more people drawing on the traffic systems in the metropolitan areas. And of course, it's an enticing field for um, this future forum as a as a format. So much, Professor Mukachi. Um, and my next quest question goes to Yasmin Pamuk, head of the Cultural Affairs and Science Department of the German Consulate General here in New York. Ms. Pamuk, the Future Forum Building Biopolis is hosted by the German Center for Research and Innovation, the DWIH New York. The five German centers for research and innovation worldwide were established by the German Federal Foreign Office and are seen as part of the German approach of science diplomacy worldwide. Why does Germany assign a great significance to science diplomacy? Hello to everybody and thank you very much for having me here today and for this opportunity of speaking. Um, I feel very pleased to be part of Building Biopolis, um, the green city of the future. And as to your question, thank you very much for raising this very important issue. Um, science and research institutions around the world are becoming increasingly interconnected as cutting edge research can only be conducted through international networks. Being an important research location ourselves, Germany attaches crucial importance to such exchange and collaboration. Moreover, it is our aim to bring science cooperation and evidence-based policymaking to the fore of international cooperation in the form of science diplomacy as such. And the concrete interaction between science communities and public policy becomes a crucial part of our external science policy. Germany and the United uh, States share the commitment for excellence in research, the strong dedication to both scientific exploration and scholarly innovation. Sometimes we take our uh, transatlantic incorporation for granted. However, to promote and nurture these commitments and um, this partnership, we do need strong champions. The German Center of Research and Innovation in New York and its partner um, centers all over the world are such champions for us. This is why the Federal Foreign Office, as well as the German government, is dedicated to promoting and to supporting centers like this. Uh, we do feel privileged to have such an excellent partner for science cooperation and science diplomacy in our premises here in New York. GCRI and its member organizations are very important partners in building international networks. And I think the Future Forum, and particularly this Future Forum, Building Biopolis, is an ex uh, excellent example for their outstanding expertise and network that we benefit from. Thank you. Changing places here. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Uh, and let me check, please, if uh, Kurt Becker is here. Kurt, can you hear me? 
I think Kurt Becker had technical um, problems to join us here, unfortunately. Uh, so I would then um, hope that he can join in a few minutes. And uh, with this, I would then come back to Professor Mukachi with another question to you. Um, Professor Mukachi, what can the global science community contribute to solving the problem of climate change, especially if we take into account that we see more political disagreement and dispute now and less consensus about what is happening and what needs to be done? What is the role of the scientific community here from your perspective? This is an uh, all-encompassing question, of course, uh, that would warrant a lengthy answer, I guess, but I will try to make it, make it short for our purpose here. I do think that uh, in these times of, of pandemic and other global challenges like climate change, it becomes um, clearer than ever than of course, that, of course, we face the same challenges worldwide and that we need to act on grounds of um, scientific evidence. And I think uh, the first step we have to take is to convince, to convince uh, politicians, the public, each and every citizen that there are global challenges, there is climate change, there is a human factor in climate change, uh, a substantial human factor in climate change, and that we need an agreement on how to act to um, attack the effects of uh, climate change worldwide. Um, of course, we are living in a world that is marked by tensions, increasing tensions and conflicts uh, within countries, between countries, but we need to stay focused and to focus on those global challenges. And I think we in the scientific community, we need uh, more than ever to explain and to make clear to everybody uh, what uh, the scientific evidence is and uh, what the effects of climate change are. But of course, what we can't do on the other hand is to replace um, those who are politically uh, legitimized to take decisions. These are the politicians. So we need to define our role very clearly and specifically, but we need to enter the arena, so to speak, and also to um, uh, invest our time and energy into explaining to the public, to politicians, to citizens, um, what the effects of climate change are. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee, for your answer. And uh, I think you made it clear that there are different roles for uh, policymakers and for scientists. And as you say, uh, it's a very important aspect to define these roles. And uh, of course, uh, there is a challenge in communication for uh, scientists. Um, I am afraid Kurt Becker didn't yet join us. Let me try once more. Kurt Becker, are you here? He is not, unfortunately. We're still trying to get him here into this uh, meeting. Uh, so I would then uh, have one more question to Ms. Pamuk. Um, and this question is uh, more specific, more specifically about the role of climate of science diplomacy. Where do you see the role of science diplomacy in fighting the global climate change? So. Thank you very much. I think this gives me um, this important uh, topic gives me a little bit time to elaborate. The current pandemic very well shows that the global challenges we face today can only be overcome when politicians, scientists and society cooperate closely. The simple truth is that science has an important role to play in virtually every di dimension of public policy and decision making. This includes health, social and environmental issues, and also as this year's Nobel laureates Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson perfectly demonstrate, also the areas of innovation and economy. Germany is therefore committed to promote the role of science diplomacy as well as that of evidence-based decision making at all policy levels. The global climate change is an effect and crucial factor that negatively impacts the lives of millions of people around the world. And in our view, it is not enough to just forecast the weather, what the weather will be. 
Policymakers at all levels must be equipped to take concrete action. This requires effective solutions based on reliable and comprehensive research on the national as well as on the international level. This is why Germany promotes many science initiatives as well as the interaction and collaboration between science, civil society and policymaking. A good example, let me name them, the German research vessel Polarstern just returned from its 389-day-long mission from the Arctic, where it collected valuable information and scientific evidence that will better inform us of our policymaking nationally and globally. Another example at the multi -level, uh, multinational level, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, for instance, has strengthened the science policy interface and empowered the international diplomatic community to make progress with innovative agreements such as the Paris Climate Accord or the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN 2030 Agenda. Moreover, climate change is also increasingly becoming a risk multiplier that threatens the stability of countries and societies as such. Germany, therefore, put the impact of climate change on the agenda of the UN Security Council as human-induced climate change is not only an environmental phenomenon, but also one of the main security threats of the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin Pamuk. Indeed, take off my mask. As you see, we're in an office setting here and we try to keep uh, the distance to be six feet apart uh, and wear mask uh, whenever um, required. Um, so, um, as unfortunately I fear Professor Becker is not yet here again, um, let me try again. Professor Kurt Becker, are you here? Because I can't see it on the screen. Obviously, unfortunately, this is not working. Uh, so then, Professor Mukachi, if you allow, I would ask you one more question. Um, because, Professor Mukachi, you are not only the president of the German Academic Exchange Service, but, but also the president of a German university, the University uh, Gießen. Um, and what would you say, what role can a university play in the search for solutions for large cities with regard to climate change? And especially, uh, could you tell us something about the uh, cooperation between university and the industry? Do you have examples for that? What is the, what could be a good way for universities to cooperate with business and industry? I have to get back uh, on the last bit. Um, do you mean cooperation between industry and academia with regard to issues of climate change or in general? Exactly, with regard to climate change, yes. Yeah, I mean, the University of Gießen and Gießen as a university town is, uh, is a typical setting, I would say, for German um, higher education institutions. We are a relatively big university by German standards, almost 30,000 students, 10,000 staff. Um, there is a neighboring university of applied sciences with 10,000 students um, and um, a four digit number of staff members. And this all happens in a city of 80,000 inhabitants. So what I want to say is that universities in German cities are very often very big players in uh, the city and in the surroundings. So whenever uh, climate change related um, targets are defined by the city communities, by the city councils, then of course um, the major players um, in the region, in the city, um, is very often the university, the higher education institution. It is of course clear that we can only reach the targets to become um, carbon uh, dioxide neutral by 2035, that's the target of the City Council of Gießen. This can only be achieved if the university as the largest institution in the city also defines its sub-targets within this, um, this larger target of the City Council. And of course we use various measures um, also in the collaboration with industry to achieve these aims. We, um, for example, use um, um, rented um, bikes, uh, 
um, large system of rented bikes for the students to move around the city and also for the uh, for staff members to move around the city because we see in the city of Gießen and this is this is very typical of German cities that uh, uh, a large proportion of the traffic is um, is caused by staff members and students and commuters related to the university and of course we think about cooperations with industrial partners um, to um, achieve changes in the use of traffic systems and to uh, move people either to bicycle systems or to uh, public transportation. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee, for giving us insights into what uh, is done at university and how you're dealing with these challenges and where you cooperate with industry and business with the example of your university. Thank you so much. With this, we have to come to an end for the stakeholder talk show. I would like to thank my guests very much for their answers and hope that these answers have inspired you all in the audience so that we can look uh, forward to our future forum building Biopolis happening the next four days. I would ask the audience now to be patient for one or two minutes, ideal for a coffee refill or to for a look at the further program of the future forum. Forum. In a moment, Dietrich Fenner will take over with quizzing Biopolis. Thank you.